there. I'm Amira David. This is Boom Bust, and here are the stories we are tracking for you today. After a year-long streak of robust job creation, it was all upended with today's new labor report. We'll break down the numbers and tell you why the total jobs added fell way below expectations. Then Kava Madani is on the show. The environmental management professor will share his two cents on California's historic water crisis and tell me all about the prospects of water privatization. Plus, in today's big deal, Aaron Aid and I discuss Tesla's mysterious decision not to report car sales and talk about why New York is letting yacht owning millionaires off the hook. We've got a lot of stories to get to today. It's a packed show, so let's get started. California's historic drought has thrown the state into crisis mode. After a winter of record low snowfalls, Governor Jerry Brown announced the state's first ever mandatory water restrictions this week. He called for a 25% reduction in water use and encouraged water districts to charge consumers for more excessive consumption. In addition, state and local governments will offer temporary rebate programs for homeowners who replace dishwashers and washing machines with more efficient models. State officials say the order will impose immediate cutbacks on water across the board, affecting homeowners, farmers, and businesses. But even though the executive order may be a good first step, California and many other drought-stricken places in the world have a much larger issue to deal with. They need a more sustainable long-term water management model. To talk about the current situation and the global ideas that are now being proposed to remedy this problem, Earlier, I spoke with Kaba Madani. He's a professor of environmental management at Imperial College of London, and he's a researcher at the University of California, Irvine. He's also the founder of Water SysWeb. I first asked him for his thoughts on the governor's executive action. I believe these are historic moments for California's water management. Uh, uh, of course, this is happening under pressure, but we sometimes we need big pressure uh, for um, making big political and institutional reforms. Um, California, of course, is unfortunate for having a drought uh, like this, but um, indeed, um, in the long term, this would benefit the state. Um, so, so in, in, you know, last year we had uh, another a big move for California regarding its uh, groundwater management and regulating groundwater. Uh, and now it comes um, a, a mandate which is asking and, and forcing the uh, cities for, for uh, saving water. And I think this is a big, big move. Of course, um, the, the amount of saving might be, um, I don't want to call it minimal, it's, it's still huge, but it's, it's nothing to, to save California's water problems. and, and um, that's, that's what everyone understands, but in the long run, it, it establishes, I think, a new culture. It, you know, people start to believe that this is, this is a situation they have to deal with, and California is not a wet place. It's a dry place, and we have to cope with it, and we have to manage water very efficiently and, and make the best out of it. The Metropolitan Water District of Southern California is already considering rationing water by the summer unless conditions improve. What kind of rationing do you think they're talking about here uh, further than what we've already seen? What would that entail? Um, so, so, I mean, so rationing is, is uh, gradual, right? So we, we increase the force as we go forward. Last year, um, the governor asked for voluntary um, movements and conservation. Now we have a new regulation which is um, forcing the, the conservation. Some some uh, counties and some places and some cities have done already well. They have tried to, to conserve. Now the mandate is forcing the ones which didn't care much or haven't done much about it. So they have to also uh, comply with the new order. And as we go forward, 
if, if the situation becomes worse and worse, so normally we start with, with uh, minimizing irrigation of the lawns and, and making sure that we're not using a lot of water there and you know, later on, and hopefully we don't get there, but it might even affect um, water use at, 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 at household level. I don't think that's, that's gonna happen at this point in time and still we have a lot of water. And the other good thing about California is that California has a very flexible um, water management system, very smart system, has a strong um, water market. And once we, you know, the situation gets worse, the economic efficiency of water use is going to increase. So water is moving uh, toward where money is or where the willingness to pay for water is higher. And that's normally the urban area. So agricultural water would eventually move if, if it has to, to urban areas that, that are in um, greater need of, of water. As I understand, right now the state has about one year of water supply left in its reservoirs. Uh, its strategic backup supply of groundwater is also rapidly disappearing. It seems like at this point, everything California is doing is more to fix this in the immediate future. But what about the long-term strategy here? What happens if this drought doesn't cease and it goes on for, for years or even decades? Um, so. So uh, I, want, I don't want to get too much into the discussion of you know, having one year of water left. Of course, there was a big controversy um, about this, this discussion. I don't think California really has one year of water left. Um, and unfortunately or fortunately, we use groundwater as a backup. Um, if, if we don't have enough water in, in, in our reservoirs, we are going to pump more groundwater. That's not a good thing, but that's what we do, and that's how we try to um, survive. Um, and, and, and so, so we have to understand that you know, you know, manage water, managing water is, is more complex than we think. Um, the, the responses and the effects are not really linear. If, if you get 20% less precipitation, it doesn't mean that your, uh, you know, your profit or you, your economic gains will drop by 20%. It doesn't mean that people will, will suffer by 20%, uh, but, but you know, 20% more. But, but what happens is that um, I don't think, actually, I don't think that these, these reforms and these mandates uh, are short-term solutions. They help us a lot in, in the short run, but I really am happy for California because I think these things help California in the long run. So I, I see them actually as long-term solutions. They, the, the groundwater regulation was a big, big thing, was a big move for California. California needed it for, for a long, long time, and it's, 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 you know, it's finally happening. Of course, there are still a lot to be done, they, you know, but, but, but these are big things for, for California. So these efforts or these reactive measurements, I think, or measures would, would help California in the long run so there are lots of benefits I don't think that we really run out of water in a year uh, that's impossible but we will live under pressure now the the other issue is like how long the drought will take statistically you know we see that you know, last year for example um, uh, people at UC Davis suggested and, and you know looked at the uh, statistics before and said that Cal you know, we, we might have another year of drought and we see that we have another year of drought so drought might might continue it helps us get better it happening in Australia they had a millennium drought and, and it just made them a better system. Of course, we have people who suffer from drought. We, we have farmers who go out of business. We have farms which, which get shut down, but, but eventually we do better and better. In the short run, we, we pay for it. We, 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 we pay for not planning for it and not getting prepared for it. But in the long term, things will get better and we do better. But of course, Water shortage is a problem. Um, global warming is a problem. Losing snowpack, which is the largest you know, natural surface um, water reservoirs for California is a big issue. And Californians uh, are suffering from what's happening at the moment. Well, California, of course, is not the only place that's suffering from a drought. There are you know, tons of places across the globe that are dealing with these very same issues. And one idea that's been thrown out there is the prospect of long-term bulk water exports across international borders. What do you think about that as a viable solution? Is that cost-effective? 
So, the, the, I mean, you, you already actually answered the question, I think. It's, it's not cost effective. When you compare it with, with other alternatives, like, say, you know, using less, um, it's, what, what we have is in, in situations like this, when we, we got a water crisis, when we have a serious water shortage, we come up with emotional responses, emotional solutions, I would say. Uh, people want to desalinate more. People want to transfer water from one location to another. I mean, if you look at it, Middle East, for example, right now, people are talking about building more dams and moving water from one, one place to another, desalinating more, recycling wastewater, and so on. But when, when you compare these solutions, these are structural solutions, these are engineering solutions, hard solutions. When you compare them with soft solutions, like using less, I mean, it's just a rational person, a smart person should go for that first. I mean, try to use less water. That was Kabe Madani, Professor of Environmental Management at the Imperial College of London.